go. We are recording. We've got a very interesting sunlight shadow on you, cutting across your, your neck. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you want to know what the podcast is about, or do you want me to just start asking you questions? Good question. Um, you can ask questions first, and then tell me what it's about. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I often have been starting with... Uh, well, do you... Let's assume for the moment that this video will be seen by millions of people all over the world. Okay. So, <laughs> so just keep that in mind. It may not, but that's the intention. Is so. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, so I go by the nomenclature Anami, even though it is not a nomenclature. It's just an adjective that I use, and uh, I live here in this tiny little town doing uh, tarot readings. So. That's the short version, the extremely short condensed version. All right. Um, and do you at all consider yourself an activist? I definitely do. So what does that mean to you? I, I think it means exactly what it says. An activist is someone who goes out and does something. Like if you see a problem that you're more concerned with what the solution is rather than concerned with rehashing the problem. I mean, if it doesn't, unless it serves some purpose to understand it better. Um, Somebody, I read something the other day, somebody said something about uh, social, what was it? It was something where they basically said socialism and activism is the same thing. And I'm like, I don't really understand that statement because socialism is like somebody who believes in a certain political uh, government structure of socialism and an activist is somebody who goes out and is active in making change. And so sometimes you'd have an activist socialist and a vice versa, but they wouldn't be mutually exclusive. So I thought that was an interesting, I'm not sure where that, you know, idea could come from. Maybe they were saying uh, the correct activists are socialists. You know, it's like that's the correct thing to be activists well, for or something. I think it might have just been, a, a, the, in their opinion, they view activists, people who are going out and doing protests or whatever, as most of them are socialists. Therefore, mm. activists are socialists, socialists are activists, right? Yeah. Um, that was, in my opinion, that's just their what experience. But I think yeah. that an activist is, it, you, you can't just sit at home and, um, you know, wish things were different and call yourself an activist. People do, but I don't think you should because by definition you're not an activist by the definition of the word. So why do you call yourself an activist? Are there specific issues that you are very active in working on? There's issues that I'm very active in working on, and others that I other issues that I either you know I'm not active in working on or care less about. Um, but I uh, I call myself an activist because I like to try and make change. I like to go out and do things that um, I think are maybe going to help change the world for the better. Um, you know, be that going to you know. Uh, perform civil disobedience at a protest or something, or if it's the way I treat people who come into my booth, you know, th that's a form of activism as well, even though there I'm only maybe interacting with one person, the person in my booth, um, I think that's just as important or more important as going out and doing something that's going to get maybe more attention, maybe there will be a picture in the paper, or that kind of activism, you know, which one's going to change the world more to, if you... To, I think actually, if we what we're doing one on one with each other is probably going to change the world. Well, I don't know. It's hot. It's My thoughts aren't really. <laughs> that's a, no, that's I, I'm totally <laughs> with you there. There's but. two, and a lot of people. I get that response a lot. There's activists, um, activism on the big, macrocosmic scale, and then there's just realizing that every single moment you are interacting with someone or any part of the planet is an opportunity to affect people or the planet right yeah, now and totally so agree. um yeah so actually and that's why i enjoy the video thing because we are having a real exchange here one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. in real time and we're videotaping one -on -one it. and one-on-one -on -one with yeah, you that's right. <laughs> whoever you are out in the world <laughs> yeah and this could this moment of whatever we talk about could be shared and replicated potentially with millions sure. of people um so if we talk about big issues we sort of get to be in both worlds 
yeah. the, the present but, world and the, uh, the macroscopic world. Yeah, and I guess I was kind of steering towards, you know, these one-on-one -on -one things are more important than going out and doing these big actions, and then I think that's why I stopped myself. Because I, don't, I think they're both equally as important, and I think big actions that get a lot of notice are important. Well, for me, the question is, which one makes me happy? You know, like sort of like, I mean, I'm a, I mean, that may sound like a crazy way to put it, but I mean, I do kind of believe people do things because it makes them happy. And if you are, an, I believe like if you're an activist for really, for, even for big things, um, like to me, like if you're an activist in your country, you're fighting for democracy and you're in a country that doesn't have it. I see that as you're still doing something to make you happy. It's just you see yourself as a part of your, your of identity home. of the people and so you're fighting for yourself in that way um, and your family and everything people are uh, they suffer and take enormous sacrifice to for themselves and for people they care about and countries they care about and populations they care about and I don't know that I don't know that activism makes me happy because I'll fully wallow in the stuff that you know like let's find a solution to this really complicated complex problem it doesn't make me happy because a lot of these things, there's not easy answers. There's not like, a, oh, if we do this, then it's all fixed. You know, um, sometimes you can do something, some, some, some activism that works out well and something changes and you see that change and it's great and that makes you happy. Or you see that it's going to make positive change and that makes you happy. But a lot of activism doesn't make me happy, but that's why I'm an activist because there's a lot of aspects of the world that I am not happy with. And I was always one of those kids, you know, who was like, that's not fair and they always say well life's not fair and my response was always I'm like what why not you know if it if it could be or in the ways that it could be why would we just say well it's not fair so it's not going to be fair let's not try and make it fair you know I mean if you can equalize or improve the lives around you or um, you know when we as we start making changes because I think that people all over the world are making these changes but as we make these changes that make the world a better place um i'm totally lost my train of thought <laughs> i'm sorry it's so hot in here <laughs> um, <laughs> that's okay take a take a deep breath we're, we're totally good i'm gonna edit it you're gonna sound so eloquent and smooth. oh good oh, good. <laughs> this part out. i thought i was just going as a whole check no nah, no nah, i can't once we get past like the three minutes, you know, we're into the. I'm gonna do a little. Yeah, then because over. people only have so much attention span. Yeah. But uh, oh, I forgot what the point of that was. But. So uh, the other thing that's sort of like the other thread, I'm you know very tempted. I I love talking to you about, but I don't know if I want to talk about it on the podcast. Is your more woo woo, uh, your. I mean, I mean, what spiritual. I'm doing for yes, what here. you what you do. Uh, would you would you want to do a reading like and have that sure, recorded? That. Would that be cool? Sure. Yeah, and as far as the the woo woo goes, you know, it's again, it's all perspective. Like I can explain this stuff in very woo woo terms, which people seem to like a lot. But really, anybody who's read very much about quantum physics and quantum mechanics, this should make a lot of sense. And these really are just little pieces of paper with images on them. Um, and when they're face down, they're any image, any card, every card in the deck. And when you flip it over, it's the card that you need huh. it to be. You know, so... Um, you know, that's very so if you want to get sciencey about it, I you know we can we can take the woo woo and make it less woo woo. Let's do that for a moment because I actually am extremely interested in quantum mechanics, and what you said just now is my understanding is at, at the quantum level is absolutely true mm -hmm. that at the quantum level um, electrons don't uh, decide what they're going to do unless they have to. Unless, um, it's, unless like the card at the quantum level, it would be the equivalent. The card doesn't decide what it's going to be until it has to decide. Well, at the quantum level, there's no card. This card is the same thing as this fabric, as the table, as you or me. And that's kind of the, the idea is that the same particles that make this card make you. And so if you're the one inquiring of the card, the particles that are right now taking the form that is you affect the form that is this card and make it... Um, you know, the card that it okay. needs to be. Well, go for it. Do you? Okay. I'll stop interrupting. <laughs> so, you're going to need your hands for this. I'm not sure. Maybe I should hold it while you shuffle them. 
Oh, so you're you can hold the camera up. and I'll do whatever you're gonna mix you them me. up. You can either shuffle them or just put them on either side like that. When you feel like they're ready, put them into three piles. And that you just point wherever you want to record. <laughs> All right, so you said shuffle however I want. Just as long as you're touching them, you're doing it right. I'm gonna put them into three piles. Mm -hmm. What do you think I should focus on? The cards or on your on you as you're speaking? Good question. I don't know. You're the videographer, you'll have to yeah. tell me what you're gonna focus on. Okay, or you don't have to tell me, you can just do it. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and draw one. represents you at this time is the card of defeat. <laughs> oh, this means you had an inherent idea or perspective about yourself. So the swords always represent your perspective, the way you're thinking about it. And so this indicates that the way you were thinking about yourself, who you are, what you're going to do, what's important to you, some of these things are falling by the wayside. Some of these, but, but more to the point, the entire picture of yourself that you thought um, you were working towards your, your whole life is a defeated idea. That idea is not going to happen. You actually have some new elements, some new information coming in that's seeding a new you, basically. Um, again, this is sword, so this is the way you're thinking about it. You're doing a lot of thinking lately, actually. And um, this is kind of about new concepts and new ideas coming together, and they're creating the seed of enlightenment. So here there's a lotus, like there is, that represents... Uh, enlightenment and understanding it's in several of the cards here it's a tiny just a few petals just beginning because it's about the a new idea so the the idea you had formerly of yourself is is changing that's all that really means so you have in your past here um, in terms of earthbound things tangible things things you can have and hold you've had some sort of worry um, worrying about their stability, worrying about their rightness, worrying about their um, place in your life, for better or for worse. Um, the Ace of Swords comes up next, also as a card from your past. This is a, a new dawning moment, a new aha moment. It's like, it's like the way you were thinking about things shifted almost... Um, I want to say suddenly it's almost like you're doing things backwards because one would normally you know you would work your way up through ideas to the ace where you have this new understanding but for you it was almost like there was a an aha moment like a like a dawning realization that led you to the beginning uh, of a concept like you started at the end and then had to restart at the beginning um, because what's led you to this moment is a lot of perspective growth the prince is about moving through things with lots of great action. And so again, we're in swords. We're in your perspective and the way you think about it. You've got a lot of forward motion, a lot of changes in the way you're thinking about things. Um, which has put you in this in this place now where they're, you know, you're changing sort of your expectations for yourself. In your foundation, what's present in everything else is the card of art. This is about coming together of different elements to make a new and beautiful whole. So the, the representation here of the water, which are your emotional experiences, and the fire, which is your passion, and those things that are your, your purpose here on earth, those things that make you feel charged up and alive, like you're, that's what you get up for in the morning and you're really excited. These are careers or hobbies or artistic passions or relationships with other people, those, those inner fire things that make you really um, feel fulfilled. So in your foundation, you're finding that some of your emotional experiences, some of the things that you've been through emotionally, are what are feeding into your passion. And you're really hoping that that passion takes a, takes a place of strength, that it can have a solid foundation, that you can work from it, that it uh, gives you some place to come 
from out into the world. That's a really weird way to put that. I'm not sure why it's put that way. But, <laughs> but wanting to have that unit to which you go out into the world and interact in relation to your, to your passion. So as you go forward into the next week or two, um, you've got some serendipitous stuff coming. So the science card is a really interesting card because when I started reading tarot cards, there was no internet. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't use technology every day. And so this card would only come up when you were going to learn from uh, somebody who was really sciencey, or you were gonna learn about something really sciencey, like math or engineering or some avenue of the sciences, something very technological minded. Or you were gonna go into computers, which at the time when I started reading was like a whole different world of going into computers. Um, now we use technology for everything. We're on the internet almost every day. You're taking video as we speak that's going to go on the internet, you know. So it gets a little bit more ambiguous of how to read this card um, in, in whether or not it has to do with actual technology, sciences, math, or if it's something that's going to happen via the internet. But again, it's these swords, it's perspective and knowledge. And um, it's not really settling to me. Usually as I talk, some of the, when I talk about the different aspects of the card, something feels very smooth and strong and other things kind of restrict. And none of them did that. <laughs> so it's possible that this is on the internet about something vaguely technological that has to do with uh, learning and expansion and it involves other people as well that are also uh, kind of technology minded or sciencey minded. So it actually, it feels like all of the aspects of this card are making kind of an appearance. They all have some part to do with this. Um, in how you see yourself is as the alchemist, as the magus. So this is about um, creating magic and creating your world, creating your reality, um, helping the universe let things fall into place. Sometimes when this card comes up, it, it, it feels like things are falling out of place, but this distinctly feels like you're drawing things in to make them fall into place which they are willingly doing so it's kind of more on that side rather than the things are falling out of place because they're supposed to be in a different place kind of a uh, backing that the card sometimes has in this case now it's like you're it's like you're creating your own magical experience of, of making things uh, exist for yourself um, in relation to someone else there's something that needs to be let go of so this this position is someone else in your life and it can either be your relationship with them their relationship with you has to do with someone else and this card specifically is about being ready to move on and so you let go of things that don't serve a lot of times and cups represent our emotional journey so a lot of times this is um, refers to those things that we take away from an experience and they're not helpful and they're not going to help you move forward and they have no real purpose in your life anymore but you just get stuck on them you know uh, we get stuck on things that traumatized us in our childhood we can't change it it's not going to do it. there's no <laughs> there's no reason to keep holding that and, and dragging it on with us as we go but we tend to so this is one of those where it's just kind of some leftover stuff that you're still mad about or frustrated about or um Yeah, it just feels like an old anger that you've even, I think you, you're not, sometimes we're still mad at somebody and we don't even remember why we're mad at them. We just have been mad at them for so long, you know, and then if you really think about it, in hindsight, it's something really trivial. It's something that uh, if you were really thinking about it today, you wouldn't even be mad at it at all, but you're so used to being mad at that person that it's just sort of held on. And so this feels like it's someone from your, from your past that you have some grudge or hold up with that it's just, um, it's not serving you and if you analyze it you'll find out that it's easy to let it go it's not even a hard one um, your subconscious is really ready for this spark so you have the only place that the wands appear in your reading is in your hopes in your subconscious desires and your conscious desires you're really wanting this thing that you're passionate about to begin to to take root uh, but it's still everything's still in the thinking stage it's still in the planning stage um, as humans, we always want to rush ahead the things we like and, and do away with the things we don't like, and life doesn't really work that way. Everything has to happen in its time and in a certain order. You can't say, oh, this hardship I don't want to go through, I'd like to rush ahead to the next happy time, because you're not going to get to that happy time unless you develop through that hardship. 
And so right now, you're not necessarily going through a hardship, but you're discovering what ideas are going to work and what aren't going to work. You're thinking things through, you're laying a groundwork, and you're getting rid of some old uh, stuff that's going to get in your way later. Uh, but it's just a, a decent time to work through. So you're subconscious, and you're, mo you're moving in this direction of your passion. It's just not time yet. Um, but within the next four to six weeks, you're going to feel like you're in your place. The Queen of Discs is about how what we have sometimes isn't what we expected or what we thought we wanted or yeah. what we prepared ourselves for our entire life. But it's where you need to be and it's what you need to... to She's in her element. She's in her queendom. Even if it's not the lush forest she pictured as a princess, it is her queendom. And she sits there rightly on her throne looking over her her holdings and and very much at one with her place on earth and so this is what's coming up for you is is this oneness in your place yeah. do you have any questions about this or specific questions you wanted to ask That was really interesting. <laughs> I don't I don't really know what I would ask. I mean I mean if you like laid out a magic if you like had a you know, like a crystal ball. I'm not sure that I would have any questions for it. Other than my my question is like is there anything that the universe would like to give me as advice? And but I mean, there was lots of little, there was lots of advice, yeah, that's strewn right. in in what you were saying. I usually do the general reading because people stuff will come out like whatever's on your mind, what you're kind of focused on will come out on its own. You don't really have to ask. Yeah. And a lot of times when people they're like, well, I'm not sure you really fully covered this aspect. Can you answer this question? And then we do. And usually we'll find the same cards will pop up. And, I, and then I can be like, well, as you, you know, as you can see, this card came up in relation to this because, you know, that's where it already came up. And your question was already answered. It's just a matter of how you can, um, you know, place place the cards. Well, well, here's one. Do you feel having the camera rolling... Did that affect what was happening while you were doing the reading? Um, not sure. I don't really have a way to know if it affects it. I invite people to record. Usually they audio record, though. Um, yeah, because you say a lot. I mean, I can see people being like, oh, I think she talked about this and then and, and wanting to, you know. Yeah, I mean, once I put my decorations up, there will be a sign that says, please feel free to record or yeah. whatever, you know, especially because... Ideally, people would record it and take a picture so they, as things happen, they can refer back, <laughs> ideally. But I usually forget to let people know that they could do that. And sometimes it gets really specific, and sometimes, um, you know, people have to attribute. Yeah. Hmm. So this won't be the first time one of your readings gets got videotaped and shared online. Your mm, has it, it might been be the seen? first time one is shared. Oh yeah. Yeah. And are you okay with that if I share it? If I'm okay. I mean, if you aren't, I won't. I think it's okay. Like I said, um, uh, you know, most of the time when I do readings, I'm saying things like, "Well, this kind of has to do with your passion and strength of your passion and this kind of stuff." Sometimes they they're really super specific, like. Um, you know, talking about specific people in their lives or specific events that are going to happen. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to think, what, what makes something more specific? Because some days it's just really, really specific, and other days it's not. Because, I mean, uh, you know, in addition to it just being quantum physics and whatever, I, I'm an interpreter and I'm also just a human being. So some days I feel really connected and on, and then there'll be, you know... Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of an example without. I don't like to. Yeah. So 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 don't put this part online. Um, but you uh -oh. know, like I had someone. I had someone.